What's going on, Supers? Welcome back to another episode of Swoopwook. In this episode, we'll be going over all the trades that we made, the players we brought in, the couple of um, new list announcements. So let's just get straight into it. Before we jump into it, of course, follow me on all my social media accounts, TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook now, all Swoop Luke. Uh, if you are a new super, welcome so much. Thank you for joining us. Be sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell up there. And if you are a returning super, welcome back. Thank you so much for rejoining me. Let's get into it. So as you're aware, the trade period has just come to a close. There was a lot of going ons and Collingwood went into this period uh, with, you know, with what happened last year, I guess not in the back of, maybe not in the back of the administrators' mind and, and everyone like Ryan and stuff like that, but definitely the fans, the 2020 trade period left us with a bad taste in our mouths, you know, seeing Phillips, R2, um, Stevenson and Trelaw all leave us for relatively cheap and, and we can look back at it, um, maybe I'll do a video a little bit later on looking at uh, the 2020 draft and how it kind of panned out for us now. But um, yeah, look, it did leave us with a bit of a sour taste in our mouths, especially because some of those deals got done right in the final couple of moments, and we just didn't want a repeat of that. We needed points uh, for Nick Dacos for a bid that would come for him. So we had a lot to do, a lot to maneuver, and hashtag in right we trust, because Graham Wright just absolutely delivered in spades. Look, I don't even know what that, that uh, saying means, in spades, but... He delivered to us in spades. I know that in spades means good. So he did such, such, such a good job. So like I mentioned, we had a couple of targets. Get enough picks in for a Nick Dacos bid. Bring in Nathan Kruger. Bring in Patrick Lipinski. And we tick, tick, tick all of those boxes. Nathan Kruger was the first domino to fall, as in player-wise. We brought in Kruger to the club. Tall forward. He's going to compliment uh, Cameron or Cox or and my check up there, Henry and stuff like that. Project player. Love it. Lipinski was the next uh, domino to fall. Uh, inside mid, exactly what we need. He can play uh, in the forward line as well. He's a good kick for goal. You've seen all the highlights and stuff. He's going to be fantastic for us. And I think he's already uh, a best 23 player. Then the third domino to fall was all the picks that we brought in. So... We brought in picks 27, 46, 55, 58, 79, and a future first round pick. I think two future first round picks, actually. So, we did a lot right. We did a lot, a lot right. And may we made up for the sins of our, of our past, especially of, of 2020. Bringing in Kruger, bringing in Lipinski for cheap. For, for just, just for absolute peanuts, you know? Lipinski came in pretty cheap with pick 43 going to the Doggies. Kruger came in with pick 41 going to Geelong and pick 55 coming back to us. A couple of pick swaps with um, Fremantle, with Gold Coast. I think there was a future Brisbane in there as well. We got enough picks for Dacos. That's all that really matters now. I think we're up to about 2,200 points. So any team that bids on Dacos from picks 2 onwards, we can match. If the Kangaroos decide to bid on him with pick one, as it stands now, with no more pick tradings, I'll get into that a little bit later, we won't be able to match it. We'd have to go into deficit. But, thankfully, you can still trade picks up until your turn in, in the draft. It's just absolutely nuts. And, and a new video will be coming out for that a little bit later on. But we're going to be able to match a bid for Nick. We're going to be able to match a bid for Dib if a, if a pick comes. This trade period is literally an, an an A. If I was grading it like a school teacher, it would be an A. Maybe not an A+, plus, but it would definitely be an A. So that's not to say that we didn't lose uh, a couple of picks and stuff as well. Going out was picks 22, 41, a future second, a future third, and a future fourth. Also, Max Lynch. Now, everyone was a little bit up in arms about Max Lynch leaving. He played a good game against um, Melbourne. We know that. I think he played against Adelaide, correct me if I'm wrong, um, two games this season. And look, he's a great Ruckman. He will be a very good Ruckman at Hawthorne. But 
you're behind Grundy, who rarely gets injured, so he's just going to keep playing. He's our first ruck. Mason Cox, you got Aiden Begg there, and don't forget Big Rue, uh, the Senegalese uh, ruckman as well. So there's a lot of there's a lot of ruck backups, and Lynch would thrive as like a number one or number two ruckman in the team. He was just not going to crack it into the team, especially with um, Cameron now pulling his weight uh, as a second ruck and a forward. So it sucks to see him leave, and and you know he's he's. Um, his, his content and stuff is really good and, and the podcast and stuff like that. And he's just, it would seem like such a good character to have around a footy club. But these things happen. He leaves for greener pastures. He leaves for greener pastures. And uh, good luck to him, Lynchos. Uh, you're probably not watching this, but good luck to you, mate. And uh, smash it at Hawthorne. So look, like I said, this, this trade period was an A for me. Leave your grades down below. Anyways, this has just been a quick trade recap uh a list recap as well so look let me know all your comments down below i'll get to as many as i can but until then like comment subscribe tell your family tell your friends tell your pets and until next time double shackers i'll soup you later